Business is a game. One businessman versus others. Politics is a game. One political candidate versus others. And even your economic scores, it's also a game. You versus other students. But if life is a game, then to understand the game of life, you need the game theory. In this video, you will learn what is the game theory, what are games, and most importantly, you will learn how to solve games. This topic, the game theory, is close to my heart because my own PhD thesis was on the game theory. And I chose it because when I learned the game theory, I was seduced by its mathematical beauty and elegance. And I hope that you too will learn, will see its beauty and elegance for yourself. And it all started with a mathematician, John Nash. John Nash, the greatest mathematician of the 20th century, one of the greatest of all time. When he was a young student applying for a PhD program, he asked his professor for a recommendation letter. And the professor gave him a letter with only five words. He is a mathematical genius. By the time he finished his PhD program, John Nash made mathematical breakthroughs that changed everything. They changed mathematics and economics and computer science and political science and even biology. John Nash made his greatest discoveries while suffering from debilitating mental disorders, paranoia and schizophrenia. He was admitted to mental hospitals. He was subject to shock treatments. He confronted his own hallucinations and he won. He overcame his mental disorders. He returned to teaching and research and he won the Nobel Prize in economics. There is a book about him and a movie, and that movie won the best picture in 2001. That was John Nash, and his life was a life of struggle, hope, and a beautiful mind. So what is the game theory? The game theory is the study of strategic decision-making. What does it mean? It means that when you make a decision, you think about what other players will do. And when they make a decision, they think what you will do. The game theory is the study of strategic interactions between rational players. Take, for example, Pepsi and Coca-Cola two major producers of uh, sugary drinks. They're so big, they're so dominant, that wherever the price Pepsi chooses will affect Coca-Cola. And wherever the price Coca-Cola chooses will affect Pepsi. So when Pepsi and Coca-Cola choose prices, they have to take into account each other. They have to think strategically. In any case, both drinks are toxic, they are garbage, so let me get rid of them. Now, what is a game? A game is a set of players, actions, and payoffs. Players. Players can be people, businesses, or even entire countries. And each player has actions. Each player has to choose what action to take. When the player takes an action, when the game is played, every player gets a payoff. 
A payoff is a reward, a gain, or a loss. And each player is rational, each player wants to maximize gains or minimize losses. And the most important game is the prisoner's dilemma. Imagine yourself a criminal. You and your friend robbed a bank, but the police got you. So you are in your prison cell and the police offers you this deal. If you confess to the crime and give up your friend, you will go home, you will go free, and your friend will get three years in jail. But if your partner confesses, if he gives you up, then he will go home and you get three years in jail. If you both confess, each will get two years in jail. If you both deny and stay silent, one year in jail each. So imagine yourself sitting in a prison cell, thinking what to do. Should you confess or deny? Should you confess to the crime and give up your partner? Or should you stay silent? So let's solve this game. Now we have two prisoners and two actions. We can create a two by two matrix. No, not that kind of matrix. To create the payoff matrix, I'll be using two colors. I'll be using the black color for the first prisoner. And I'll be using the blue color for the second prisoner. And each prisoner has two options to confess or deny. The first prisoner has two options to confess or deny. And the second prisoner has two options to confess or deny. Now in this matrix, we'll put payoffs, the years in jail for each prisoner in each situation. Look at this outcome. When prisoner number one confesses and the prisoner number two also confesses. In this case, prisoner number one gets two years in jail and the second prisoner will get two years in jail. The first number will represent the payoff of the first prisoner and the second number will represent the payoff of the second prisoner. Now look at this situation. In this situation, prisoner number one denies, he stays silent, while prisoner number two confesses. In this situation, prisoner number one gets three years in jail, while prisoner number two goes free. Look at this situation. This outcome is the opposite of this one. In this outcome, prisoner number one confesses, while prisoner number two denies. In this case, prisoner number one goes home, he goes free, and the second prisoner gets three years in jail. And the last outcome is this one, when each prisoner denies, when prisoners stand up for each other and stay silent. In this case, the first prisoner gets one year in jail, and the second prisoner receives one year in jail too. And this two by two matrix is called the payoff matrix. It's called the payoff matrix because it shows payoffs, gains or losses, in this case losses, that each player gets. And in this case, each player, each prisoner wants to minimize his losses, wants to minimize years in prison. Imagine yourself as this prisoner sitting in your prison cell, 
thinking what to do. How would you make a decision if you didn't know what the other person will do? Will he deny? Will he confess? You don't know. So how do you make a decision? You make assumptions. Assume that your partner is going to confess and give you up. What should you do? Now assume that your friend is going to stay silent. What should you do? So let's solve this game for the first prisoner. Prisoner number one doesn't know what the second prisoner will do, so he will make assumptions. Assume that the second prisoner will confess. In this case, this is the situation that the first prisoner will face. Assuming that the second prisoner confesses, the first prisoner has a choice to confess or deny. He has a choice between two years in jail or three years in jail. A choice between minus two and minus three. Which one is better? Two years in jail is better. So underscore it. Now let's assume that the second prisoner denies. In that case, this is the situation the first prisoner will face. The second prisoner stays silent. In this case, the first prisoner has a choice to confess or deny, to go free or get one year in jail. What is better? Going free. Zero years in jail is better. Underscore it. Now notice that the first prisoner should confess no matter what. If his friend confesses, the first prisoner should confess. If the second prisoner denies, the first prisoner should confess. In the game theory, we call it a dominant strategy. In this case, confessing is a dominant strategy. A dominant strategy is a strategy that you do no matter what. No matter what other people do, you should do this. In the prisoner's dilemma, for example, your friend confesses, you should confess. Your friend denies, you should confess. You should confess no matter what. That's a dominant strategy. Now, let's solve this game for the second prisoner. The second prisoner will also make assumptions. The second prisoner will assume that the first prisoner will confess. If the first prisoner confesses, then this is the situation that the second prisoner will face. Assuming that the prisoner number one confesses, the second prisoner will have a choice between confessing or denying. Between two years in jail or three years in jail. Which one is better? Two years in jail is better. Underscore it. Then the second prisoner will assume that the first one will deny. In that case, this is the situation the second prisoner will face. He will have a choice between confessing or denying, between going free or staying in jail for one year. Which one is better? Going free, underscore it. And the cell with two payoffs underscored is the solution to this game. Nash equilibrium. In this case, this is the cell with two payoffs underscore, the Nash equilibrium. But the Nash equilibrium is not minus two minus two. No, it's a set of actions. You need to tell the players what to do. So Nash equilibrium. The first prisoner should confess. 
and the second prisoner should confess. The Nash equilibrium is confess, confess. So how to solve games? Create a payoff matrix and then solve the game for each player and you solve games column by column and row by row and you solve the game by underscoring payoffs if you just pick a cell and you claim it's a Nash equilibrium and you didn't underscore the payoffs it's wrong it's not a game theory it's voodoo it's not science you need to solve the game column by column and row by row and you solve the game by underscoring payoffs mm -hmm. and then you find a cell with two payoffs underscored and that cell with two payoffs underscored that's a Nash equilibrium we just solved the prison's dilemma and we found that the Nash equilibrium is confess confess is this the best outcome is it the best for our prisoners to confess no the best for them would be to deny to suffer one year in jail and then going home minus one minus one is better than minus two minus two but our prisoners cannot achieve this outcome to see this, let's imagine that our prisoners can talk. In the prison yard, they meet and they talk and they decide to stay silent. Will that change anything? No. The agreement will fall apart immediately. Because after they talk, they go back to their cells. And each prisoner in his cell will solve this game again. He will think, if my friend stays silent, as we just agreed, what should I do? I should confess. I should give him up because I will go free. But if my friend cheats on me, he gives me up, what should I do? I should confess. I should give him up. Because then I will avoid years in jail. Each prisoner will solve this game and they will come to the Nash equilibrium, confess, confess again. You shouldn't trust your criminal friend. And by the way, he doesn't trust you either. Our prisoners are rational individuals. They see the best outcome. They see the deny, deny is the best but they cannot achieve it. And that is the beauty and the paradox of the prison's dilemma. People see what's best for them, but they can't cooperate. They can't achieve the best outcome. They make each other worse off. Don't think about the prison's dilemma as something only the prisoners face. No, we can see the prisoner's dilemma everywhere. And by we, I mean people and businesses and governments and even entire nations. I'll give you two examples, two examples of the prisoner's dilemma. One example will be from business and another example from politics. The Boxing Day sales. And at good old times, the Boxing Day sales would happen on Wait for it, the Boxing Day, the day after Christmas, December 26. That day, stores would cut prices and they would have a sale. These days, all stores run Boxing Day sales and Christmas sales starting in November. What happened? The prisoner's dilemma happened. Because someday, some store decided what if I run a Boxing Day sales a bit early I'll get all the customers and I will make a lot of money then that store ran a sale and then another store and then another store and the result is all stores 
start Boxing Day sales and Christmas sales in November or even October. Stores cut prices, lose money and make each other worse off. Another example is almost every military conflict. There are two armies. They don't trust each other. And if one army thinks that the enemy might attack them, then it's better to attack them first. But the enemy thinks the same way, that if this army prepares an attack, then it's better for them to attack first. The result is two armies are constantly attacking each other, making each other worse off. The prisoner's dilemma. This was the prisoner's dilemma, but the game theory has other games. So in my next video, I discuss two other games, the battle of sexes and the zero-sum games. So watch the next videos and thank you for learning games.